like that this card has some really fun free fights scattered throughout it, whether it's, you know, through the early prelims or the prelims. You know, and, and by the way, just because, you know, I'm not analyzing all the fights, but only the ones that I like doesn't mean that I'm not interested in the other fights. It's just I have a preference for some, for uh, for the fighters for some reason, or I'm just excited to watch it. But um, I'm really interested in this one, and it's funny because when I, uh, uh, before I looked at the odds, I actually thought William Knight was going to be a pretty sizable favorite because of Maxime's, um, um, he hasn't fought in a long time, and he's older, he's 37. I mean, William Knight's going to be growing more and more and more. And uh, even though I am biased uh, for Russian fighters because I'm, you know, uh, originally Russian, I, I, you know, I think it might not be a bad play to grab William Knight at uh, plus 145. Or I also think it's not a bad play to grab Maxim Grishin, Maxim Grishin at, um, by, de uh, by decision at plus 150 because, you know, I don't think he's going to win by knockout or submission. I mean... William Knight is so freaking durable. I mean, yeah, he did get knocked out early on in his career by Tafan Nachuki. And actually, I was like, whoa. Like, I actually had really high expectations for Tafan because of the fact that he knocked out William Knight. Um, but, you know, so far he's done he's done pretty well. But but he, he, I think he had a loss to Jun Yung Park that I was surprised about. But, um, you know, even Dot Won Jung dominated him, was beating the crap out of him on the ground. And William Knight has the heart of a fighter and he stuck through. I mean, the guy's built... Like, um, like I said, you know, like, a, like literally the Hulk, you know, and um, so I don't see Mac, uh, Maxime finishing him. So I think that, you know, either way, um, you know, grabbing William Knight at plus 145 or Maxime by decision, or if you want to do like a be fancy and do a hedge, you know, where you put the same amount on both sides, uh, you know, you probably get like, um, you know, 50% on your money, I think if you're right. So I think it's a pretty damn good, um, you know, damn good, um, Situ uh, situation where you know you either get Maxime because I mean I don't see it you know I, I guess it's possible Maxime wins by knockout or maybe by sub but I really doubt it I actually think it's funny because he's more like he's you know him Maxime by knockout is plus 300 Maxime by submission is plus 900 I know he's not a submission guy but I feel like he has a better chance of submitting he does have some submissions on record but I think he has a much better chance of submitting William Knight than knocking him out I mean William Knight is one of the toughest guys out there I mean the guy's you know, has a crazy chin, tough, never gives up on himself. I mean, even when he's down, he's like the king of comebacks. And um, yeah, so I think either way is a smart play. Just looking back at these guys' records, just to uh, have an idea. I usually kind of look at that before talk about the odds, but um, you know, I just thought uh, <laughs> I switched it up this time. But um, so you know, you look at William Knight. He um, he had that nice one. I actually had him. Money in him against Alexa Kamor, even though he was like Stipe's protege and he's like Stipe's training partner. I had him as a dog. I actually had him a lot as a dog. I had him as a dog against Crody Brun uh, Brundage. Then uh, for Da Eun Jung, I think I had money on him and Da Eun Jung, after, especially after that Sam Alvey loss. Because, you know, and I was like, whoa, I kind of lost out. Even though I really liked Da Eun Jung, I thought he was an amazing fighter. I had Da Eun Jung in like a par in a big, in like a three leg par way, which I don't do anymore with. Um, uh, you know, him when he fought Sam Alvey. He ended up hitting anyway because since it was a draw, the parlay just continued. Then he knocked out Fabio Charant, the newcomer. You know, he's fighting Carlos Ulberg now. So we'll see how good he is because so far, you know, he's lost. Fabio's lost his first two fights in the first round. But again, that doesn't mean that he's not a good fighter. It just could be nerves. Who knows? And then he had that. He squeaked out that victory against Alonzo Manifield. Um, You know, the battle of the Titans. Those guys are both jacked. I actually... I'd say Alonzo was a little more lower body dominant, um, and um, uh, Williams a little upper body dominant. Although these guys again are both extremely jacked, like two of the most jacked guys in the white heavy white heavyweight division. I'm actually starting to get excited for the white heavyweight division. Actually, one of the um, um, you know I'm actually excited to see the guy that Maxime Grishin fought before Dustin Jacoby continue to fight. I really like his style, uh, the Hanyak. I think it's a really cool name. I think it's like a Polish warrior, from what I googled. But yeah, going back to uh, yeah, William Knight has the ability to squeak out some of those fights with his heart and grit and determination. Maxime, I think he has on paper, he's the more skilled fighter. You know, he's uh, has more, uh, he does have a, it's interesting, I don't know, he had a kickboxing record, he has a win there. But he, I mean, he was pretty competitive on the feet against Dustin Jacoby, and he hurt him in the first round. Dustin Jacoby kind of rallied a win. I did feel like Maxime still won that fight. I thought it was a robbery. You know, I don't want to say robbery because it was a close fight, but I thought he won that fight. Um, he knocked out Godzimor Antigolov, and I think Godzimor Antigolov, I don't even know if he's in the UFC anymore. I think he had a bunch of losses. Let's take a look here. 
yeah, I mean, the guy, uh, uh, so maybe that's, you know, not a great, great way of looking at it because, uh, although he did seem solid in that fight, but yeah, the guy got knocked out by Ian Kutuaba, got knocked out by Michal Oleksiejczyk, got submitted by Paul Craig, got knocked out by Kassin Grishin, and then ended up getting kicked out of the UFC, going to like a different organization called UAE Warriors, and he got finished by a guy named Vit, uh, Vitor Petrino. And uh, so, yeah, so maybe don't, you know, again, that may be another reason why you put some money in William Knight. But I thought, you know, with this vast amount of experience and the fact that he actually won against, um, um, it was a very close loss. I think he got kind of out-wrestled by Marcin Tabura at a higher weight class. I think his performance in Dustin Jacoby speaks volumes because of the fact, again, he's older and William Knight's going to be making a lot more progress from, you know, day to day. But I think he has a lot more wealth of knowledge and experience, and I think he's kind of more a technical fighter, uh, Maxime Grishin. But his loss against Justin Jacoby speaks volumes because look at what Justin Jacoby has done since he um, he beat. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, since he uh, beat Maxime Grishin. So he had a draw with Ian Kutuaba, which a lot of people thought that um, uh, the Hanyak won. Um, but, uh, but it's funny because I actually had money Ion Kutuaba and that draw bailed me out. Then he had a knockout against Darren Stewart. That's when I really started believing him. I had money on him there, um, you know, in a parlay and I was surprised he was only, only minus 170. So that was awesome. And then he beat John Allen. So clearly, you know, this guy is on the, you know, I'm actually surprised that he doesn't have a number next to his name. He's fought some solid competition. Hopefully, you know, uh, his next fight, he can get a number next to his name. You know, the crazy thing, I'm looking at it right now, he has a loss against John Salter, who is a middleweight. So it's wild. So this guy went from middleweight, then he went up to heavyweight, then he went back down to white heavyweight. Because he's a pretty small white heavyweight, very fit and like kind of strong and, um, you know, uh, a great kickboxer, but definitely, uh, you know, not the biggest white heavyweight, I would argue, but definitely has great cardio. Um, and uh, it's, it's crazy that he fought at heavyweight. So... Uh, but I guess, I mean, I guess you could, you know, if you think about it, if you fought at middleweight, you could be weighing in at, I mean, look at Paul Costa, the guy weighing in at like 222. So, you know, you never know. But yeah, so going back to that, that, you know, you can get a lot out of that loss that he had. And again, it was very close and he almost finished Dustin Jacoby in the first round. He really hurt him. So he is a, um, and Maxime's, you know, competed in the heavyweight division, even though he was only 220 pounds. So, you know, I do again. Um, you know, going back to the odds, I either William Knight plus 145 is a very solid play or Maxime by de by decision at plus, uh, plus 150 or again, doing a fancy, uh, hedge. So, you know, either way, I think that's, I just don't see any other way that the fight could take place. Uh, maybe Maxime, you know, goes out there and, you know, wants to, you know, he's older, maybe he wants to send a message, but again, he's more likely, I see him more kind of fighting like Orlovsky, the conservative way and winning some fights. But I do think he could do pretty well in the white heavyweight division. I think he's solid. He has a lot of skill. So hopefully I do want Maxime to succeed. You know, I know he went, he only made it to the UFC, um, you know, later in his career and he's an older a gentleman. He's 37 years old and he took, I think a few years off since that Dustin Jacoby loss. So I hope to see him in the future, but I love William Knight as well. He's an awesome guy and it's always fun watching a guy who just, is just in incredibly jacked. I mean, huge legs, huge upper body, you know. Um, so I'm excited for that fight. So uh, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, please like and, and subscribe. Thanks.